There's no tour guides. Tour guides. Tours cancelled, guys. Get refunds on your tickets. <laughs> Naveed Central. What's up, guys? It's your boy Naveed Central back with another amazing mukbang. And, guys, I am super, super excited, humbled, and honored to be in the presence of an absolutely massive and amazing guest of mine, guys. This guy is not only a TV superstar, he's a massive comedian, guys. He has his own show called Ten O'Clock on Channel Floor, Channel Channel Floor, Channel Four. As you know, guys, right now I am flustered, right, because I'm in the presence, as I said, of someone who's absolutely amazing. This guy's, you know, massive not only in the Asian community but in the British c c comedy community as a whole, guys. He's smashed it, as I said, his own TV show. He's a comedian. He's actually hosting a show this evening as well um, at the Glee Club in Birmingham, guys. Without further ado, I'm going to present to you one of my role models as well, guys. Um, who I know as Lumbu from Man Like Mabin, but his name is Tez Ilias. What up, what up? What up, how you doing? Welcome, brother. Welcome, Thank you for bro. having me. Thank you for Enjoy being that. on your channel. <laughs> in Central. Central. So, guys, we're at me, you restaurant. You've never been here before, right? I've never been to me and you, so I'm excited about this, bro. And we are different. Okay, so it does look banging, isn't it? So I've got the chicken burger. You've got. Do you the, know the thing where someone orders some and you're like, oh man, I wish I had that. You got. But what? Why? Why? Why don't we? Oh, I've got, oh no, I've got. Oh, I don't even see the meat one. I just saw the you, chicken. You, 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 nah, you, I'm you, you, not, you, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Get a meat one. But we can um, half in it and we can half half. Yeah. So should we? Do, should we do half? Yeah, yeah. Did they give us? Did they give us a? Is there no knife in here? Oh no. Okay. No, what I can do is I'll just shove the fork in the middle. What do you think about that, guys? This is mad. This is mad. Um. That's a good idea though, what you just said there. Very good idea. Sharing is caring after all. Exactly. They both get to taste both. No, okay. I'll, I'll, bro, I don't know how to do this. I'll, okay, I'll do it. I don't know how they're expecting me to hit the burger, burger without um, a knife anyway, because I, I usually cut mine in half and have half each. That way it becomes manageable, isn't it? But I don't know, bro. You don't have to take care of this one. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, guys. So, Tez, whilst I do this, I want you to tell me mm -hmm. about how it all began. How you, as a household name, massive comedian, being on TV, etc., begun? Where, where did it all start from? Bro, so for me, yeah, yeah, I started off. So I moved to London, yeah, at the grand old age of 25, 26, okay. and I thought, you know what, I need a hobby. I need something to do in the evenings because London's a big place and you get lonely. So I started looking. I'm gonna have one of these chicken bits, bro. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for a comedy writing workshop. Mm -hmm. Not creative writing. So when was this? 2010. 2010, okay, cool, eh? So, a long time ago. <laughs> 11 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And trying to find a writing workshop, I came across a stand up workshop. Mm. And I said, Ham, my friend always told me that I'm funny. I never mm. thought about it before that, bro. I was doing I did a degree in biochemistry, a master's in management. I was working down in London in the home office, proper career, civil service, all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And suddenly this chance to do a little workshop in stand-up comedy came along and I thought, my friends always tell me that I'm funny, I believe them because I'm deluded. <laughs> yeah, funny though. But back then, we didn't know this was going to happen though, innit? Mm. So back then it was like, I thought, you know what, no one's going to see this. It's not like it's going to be on TV or anything, innit? I'm just doing it for my own just Yeah. So I went and I did it, bro. And Alhamdulillah, the, the, the workshop was good. At the end of it, like whatever you prepare, the five little minutes you prepare, yeah. They put that... Um, you can pass that here, that's good, that's good. Cool. Yeah. Cheers, bro. We got some more. These people like me and you are so generous, you know. You gotta come here. <laughs> Lady Food Road, Birmingham. I have a bite of the burger as well, you're gonna love it. I oh, already oh, have the chicken one, the fried chicken one. I haven't had that one yet, but. Alright, let me. Fire. It's actually fire, guys. I haven't done it yet. We got the macaroons as well. Correct try, the correct try is banging about it, bro. We got the. Like. Mmm. It. It's fire, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? It's dangerous because I got a white shirt on. Oh, it's you don't want to get me. I've got a white shirt on. <laughs> we got this um, exclusive ice cream as well. It's, they make it. It's originated from France in, uh, in the palace. <laughs> Guys, it contains like caramel syrup, proper creamy. I've had it, I've had a taste of it before, so it's fire. Milkshake, macaroons. Guys, it's mad party going off. Cheesy Bang. fries with chicken, minced beef. But anyways, we were saying, right? Mm. So my first gig in the summer of 2010, Okay. off the back of this workshop, mm -hmm. people laughed when I wanted them to laugh, which helped. I no. felt like they were laughing with me, not at me, innit? One of them ones. So from there, I found this startup comedy scene and started going for it, but I started smashing it like, And here I am, 11 years later, start with you, doing a mukbang. That is mad. Okay, so, 
You've obviously summarized it within two seconds, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. But I want you to tell me what side happening. So that is actually interesting. You never got heckled. I did get heckled, bro. Not, not oh. my first show. No. Not on your first show, which is amazing because usually, guys, come on, you managed your first comedy show. You didn't know what's going to happen. Well, how did you feel at the time? So nervous, bro. Mm. So unbelievably nervous. Mm. The idea of standing up in front of people mm. and trying to make them laugh mm. and they know you're trying to do it. It's a bit different. <laughs> but you're always a funny That's guy, though. hard, man. Yeah. Mm. At uni, I was, a, I was a class clown at school. Mm -hmm. But at that age, it's different now because you've got social media in it, so you've got other role models to look at. And like you mentioned before, that I was one of yours. Like, that was mm. a bit humbling to me. It's a bit weird for me to people, for people <laughs> to describe me as that. But we didn't have that when I was growing up. There's no Instagram, TikTok, YouTube to look at, like how other people are doing it. So the idea then that I would become this actor and comedian and that was a pipe dream. It's like ridiculous. So Alhamdulillah, the fact that I'm doing it now is. It's very surreal to me. It's massive, a martial law, man. You know, obviously you put the work in, you've got there. So, you know, what, what started to happen then? Like, so, obviously you're building your brand, mm. right? So you were doing the comedy. So what started to happen from there? Like, obviously, as a comedian, because it's a 10-year, you know, playing gap. So what, what started to happen? I wanted you to tell me the sort of transition from being on, just on stage, which you still have continued to do right now, but to getting onto TV. So how, how, did, you st how did this all start happening? So I was doing... Stand up comedy in the evenings okay. with my day job in the day. What were you doing? And did both for six and a half years. What were you doing? I was a home office in London. Oh. It's a proper grown up job, not like a part time thing. Mm -hmm. Proper career in it. That's what I studied at uni. I didn't study that at uni, but that's my graduate job after uni, my big job after uni. Mm -hmm. I went to London to do that. Mm -hmm. And then this little hobby thing came along. And bro, I just loved it. The second I jumped on stage, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is the thing that I'm, I'm better at this than I am working in the office. So I thought, I'm going to work as hard at this as possible. Mm. But in the beginning, there's no money. Like an apprenticeship, innit? There's no money at the beginning. I'm, mm. trying to, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm hustling, I'm doing all the shows for no money, blah, blah, blah. Because yeah. I'm learning how to try to be better, innit? So I needed that day job in the day. The Edinburgh Fringe changed things for me. So I went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2015, which is like the world's biggest arts festival. Did my one-man solo show there for an hour, an hour mm. every single day for four weeks. That's that changed thing. When people saw that, then they were impressed, like industry people, BBC, blah, blah, blah. Mm. They were like, right. Oh, they, they were there? Yeah, they come in and watch, they like scouts in it, send scouts up in it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they send scouts up to watch you, and they're like, if they like what you do, bro, then you start having meetings, innit? So, you're building the brand. Mm -hmm. When I say building the brand, because I believe everyone is a brand themselves. You as tell easy as easy as you are the brand. Because you, you I, I see myself as a brand. And every person has, because so, the brand is what's marketable, mm. right? In today's society, like, influencers are brands. You're your own business, people don't actually realise that, but that's how I see it, that's my perspective on things, right? So... I didn't realise this back then. Yeah, I see. Because this is all new, innit? Yeah, yeah. All this Instagram influencers, blah, 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 monetize this, that. Mm. That's all new. Yeah, I right, no. I don't know, none of that back then. I wish I did. Because <laughs> I was trying to build that following from back in the day. Mm. But... I wasn't on that hustle. Yeah, because you know. I had my day job as well. Yes, yes, yes. So, cause that was that was my, that was still my main source of income, innit? Mm. Where the comedy thing was a hobby on the side. So I'd, I'd respect that a li at least a little bit because that's what's paying my rent, innit? I see that. Um, and yeah, we didn't we, we had YouTube obviously with Facebook, but it wasn't like big now. It wasn't like content like it is now. Mm. So what started happen then? So you you've gone to the festivals now. You've seen a good reception. Mm. But then you time then you got when you went on stage and you had a bad experience. Could you mention a quick story like of, of that happening? Bro, it's like, imagine having a rough day at work. Mm -hmm. It happens, bro. It happens to everyone. Have you ever tried doing a comedy skit? It doesn't go well. Anyone watching this? These guys yeah. are amazing. I was saying that. Thank you, brother. Guys, it's mad. It's mad. Like, just a moment, on the camera, on the camera, on the camera. Guys, just came on the camera. Guys, came on the camera. I can't have you in the camera, please, brother. Hey, no, no. Thanks. Um, yeah, cool. So. Yeah, amazing. Done. Cool. Thank you, bro. I will get that. Thanks. Is that your fault? That's my, that's my fault. I never told you. Sorry, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah? So you're saying? Appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> what are we talking about? Um, negativity. Yeah, yeah, bro. Apple, bro, on stage, it's just not going well. For whatever reason, the crowd's not hype. you not on your game. It just, they're not laughing at your stuff, innit? And early on, when you don't know anything, you have no plan B. You barely, you barely got plan A. Mm. You got no plan B, plan C, plan D. Now, if I go out and people don't laugh at my first couple of jokes, I've got other places to go. 
Okay, okay. I've got experience now, innit? Yes, yes, yes. But back then I didn't have that experience. You have to go through that, innit? You have to go through those tough times, whether it's at school, college, work, personal life, home life, job. You have to go through those tough times to be able to navigate it in the future. So, for example, if you if you annoy your mum at home, and the first time that happens is a bit scary because she's starts shouting at you and stuff, and you're like, oh, mum, I didn't mean it. But the next time it happens, you know how to navigate it better. You know, like, okay, you need to ask for permission and sneak around her or blah, blah, blah. Mm. And you work it out in it. But you need to go through that shit first yeah, yeah. to be able to cope with it better in the future. Yeah, so the same with comedy. Yeah. It's just comedy's a bit exposing, innit? Because you're mm. on stage, innit? And people, when it doesn't go right, people are laughing at you, yeah. not with you. And that's horrible. But part of being a comedian, but part of just living in everyday life is being resilient. Yeah. And getting through those tough times. And I know, like, we've all been, you've been through tough times, I've been through tough times. But you have to learn that that's not the be all and end all. There's a saying in Islam, actually, there's a saying generally as well, it won't last. Tough times won't last, yeah. But good times don't last either, that's the point. Yeah. So whatever you're going through, whether it's euphoric, best day of your life, worst day of your life, it won't last. Most things happen in the middle. Most of the time, you're kind of somewhere in between. There'll be days where you're like over the moon, promotion, blah, 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 whatever, yeah, you get a new partner, whatever, you're over the moon. Other times, worst day of your life, you get sacked, you, you get rejected or whatever, you feel like shit, but you get over it, bro. Even like the work, people have, you know, people have a death in the family, and in that time period is the worst thing that could ever happen to them, bro. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, you know, you never forget that person, but you learn to live your life again. Things move on, so same with like, if I have a bad body at work, if I get booed off, and I mean booed off stage, but more or less, you know, close to it. Yeah. So if you get booed off stage, or people are not enjoying what you do, and it's proper, it's basically, bro, that's the word. Yeah, right? it's basically. basically yeah. So you, you, you just stood there, trying to make people laugh, you're in front of a hundred whatever people, no one's laughing, it's embarrassing, bro. But that's what the next show's for. Okay, prove on what you do. So, you know. Mm. Right, now. So, obviously, you, you, you decided to comedy, People in the, in the audience, BBC, etc. So I recognise you, the scout side, okay, this guy's good, it's funny, right? Mm. Um, so what side happened from there then? Were you approached by anyone or... Because I want you to tell me to trans- transition to... One thing, one really funny joke I did, with, I was speaking to this bit off camera as well, it's something called Bounty. Um, guys, it's absolutely hilarious. He comes in, um, back to Blackburn, he's been living with a white girl, and obviously he's come back to Blackburn thinking he's only coming for a little while, and now the family... Um, I'm trying, to, trying to say to him, oh, you're a bounty, you're a coconut, right? Because he's, he's, he's become a white guy now, does that make sense? It's like, if, if you know what a bounty is, right, it basically means that you're brown on the outside, white on the inside, right? Um, so he hasn't got that Asian heri- culture anymore within mm. him. So, you know, things like that, like, what, how did that, and working with people like Guz Khan, for example, who's a good friend of yours, right? How did all of this happen, and how did you get onto the BBC and Channel 4 and etc.? So, yeah, so when they come see me at Edinburgh Fringe, and they yeah. see my show, they see my comedy, they were like, that's someone we want to work with, isn't it? Okay. You start having meetings, you start discussing ideas, you start workshopping, you start going back and forth on ideas and that. Mm-hmm. And then eventually they're like, all right, let's 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 try one out. Sick. So that's what happened with me. I made a show. I made a little short. The first time me and Gus worked together, we made a little short. Um, it was set in Christmas time in our shisha cafe. Who put you together? Did you put yourself together? Or? So we kind of just started ta- talking online. Right. And when we met, he, he came to see me do a comedy show in London okay. at the comedy store. And straight away we clicked. Okay. So you got to understand this is a very, it's a very white middle class industry. Yeah, yeah. So most people that I meet are white. So when yeah. I meet someone like Guz, yeah, exactly. who's from Pakistani like me, working class like me, from ends like me, straight away we gelled in and we clicked. There was chemistry. So I was like, Ram, man, you know, and, and, and I recognise he's a very, very, very talented guy as well. I thought when I get a chance, I've got to work with this man. So I got a chance to make a little comedy thing for Sky called Tez Ilyas's Christmas. It was set in a shisha cafe. Well, Guz plays my little brother. It's almost like the reverse of um, uh, of my like Moby, where he plays my little chadla oh, brother. Oh yeah. And um, and he's like trying to decorate the shisha cafe into like a Christmas theme. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? The shisha cafe, blah blah blah. So that was fun. And then from there, he got a chance to make man like Moby, and then mm. he put me in that. And obviously, man like Moby took off in it, and then obviously we've been working together ever since. And how was that feeling? How how was the feeling of? Now, like, come on, it's not really it's not normal, it's not like, come on, well, you're, you're Asian, normal Pakistani, you know what I'm saying? To be getting on the TV, man, like, yo, like... It's very surreal to me, bro. Like, like how, how did it feel? Like, was it something you visualised in? Like, how do you imagine this happening? That's what I'm going to ask you, because some people obviously imagine things happening, some people don't. And mm. everyone's different. 
And I understand, but was this where you are now or everything that happened on TV, for example? Bro, for me, it was, I just, obviously I had ambitions in it, yeah. and I have dreams and I'm like, I want to do Love of the Apollo, I want to do, I want my own show, this, that. But for me, I live also by the Islamic principle of whatever is written for you will come for you. Yeah, yeah. All I can do is try. Try, yeah, sure. So I can go to the right meetings. I can make sure I work hard on my shows. I can work hard on my jokes. I can try my best. But ultimately, whatever is in my kismet will come to me, no matter how little or hard I try. Because some people, bro, they don't try that much and they get everything. Yeah, right, right. Other people try, 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 and they get very little. People make one, one video and they go viral. Yeah, and that's your kismet. Some yeah. people's kismet is they make that one video, they bang, and then they're off doing brand deals and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Other people, bro, they hustle four or five years, and then they might work out. And for some people, they might never work out. But that's yeah. their kismet, bro. You can't... Yeah. Ultimately, you can obviously... I but do get disappointed when, when things don't work out for me, when yeah. someone doesn't work out, I do get disappointed. But it lasts a lot shorter time now because I realise it's not my kismet to have that. Yeah. It wasn't meant for me. So with these things, bro, that's how I try and live. So the good things that have happened are amazing, bro. Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing. And I try and do my best when I get the opportunity. But a lot of things that I have wanted, that I haven't got as well. Auditions, this, that, they haven't gone my way. But you're like, okay, well, people are looking up. People will be looking at me going, how did he get a man like Mobin? How did he get that, whatever? But they don't see all the things I didn't get. And I'm looking at other people going, Oh, how come how come that so and so is on that show? How come so and so is on this show? Who books him for that? Who books her for that? And I forget, I don't know this. And they're probably looking at me going, How did he get that? How did exactly. Everyone's always looking at other people, innit? Mm. So I always look at you're looking at me, you're gassing me up, bro, doing all this. And I'm looking at you YouTubers, influencers, yeah. going, Ramon, how do you get those viral little TikTok videos? How do you do all that editing? How do you how do you yeah. have so much energy on camera and stuff? So everyone's <laughs> just Looking at each other, going, "Oh, we want to be at that," but ultimately, you gotta remember, Alhamdulillah, whatever you've got is a blessing, and that's, yeah, that's what, what you have is meant for you. What I have is meant for me. Nah, nah I respect that. And I think you still gotta work hard, though. Yeah, right. You gotta like. I agree with that. Like, what you just said there is true. Like, in terms of people have their own blessings. Like, everyone's unique in their own way. And I think mm. that when you when you're on your like own journey and you're doing your own thing, right? Obviously, that's when you can really be someone. Mm. Like a lot of people try and be someone else. If mm. I try and be you, I can't be you. Does that mm. make sense? Mm. And then people will see right through that. It's when, and I learned that with my brand. When I, like, initially when I started, I weren't meeting myself fully. Like, I'm not a comedian. I'm an entertainer. But I was trying to be a comedian. I'd probably watch some of yours, just someone else's stuff and be like, yeah, I can, I can do this. And then, but with that with me, I'm not a comedian, I'm an entertainer. Mm. And I realized, and I realized that, watch, fire. It's fire, it's fire. All the food here is banging. Mm. Muck banging. Muck banging, you get me? But yeah, man, um, so I know we haven't got too long, right? But in terms of like your your life and stuff now, being on TV, etc. Mm. obviously money starts coming in, right? Mm. Obviously, I know you're a humble guy, you're not going to speak about that, but I know on, on TV, I've seen certain... Um, I know when it, like... It's life-changing, really, right? The money you can make, come on, you got your own TV show. On Channel yeah, but you know what though? I mean, we said this, edit this bit out. Yeah. But. Ed, ed, edit this bit out. Let's not edit it out. Don't edit it out. You know, in Britain, yeah. TV's money is not, is not as much as you. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about figures or anything, but it's not as much as you think it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah. America's different. Yeah, if yeah. I was doing what I've done, what I've done here, if I'd done the same thing in America, yeah, bro, I'd be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. I'd be a millionaire. Bro, it's not the same here. Unless you're a mate, so I'm, because this is feel like, because you got to me up around, I appreciate it, Alhamdulillah, it's amazing. <laughs> but I don't feel like a made man. Do you know what I mean by that? If you're like in gangsters, in, yeah, in, yeah. in like, in like um, the mafia, there's like, there's made men in it, you can't touch them. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like that, bro, because I'm just hustling. Like, I've got one series of my show, I want two, three, I want that show to run for ten years. It might not, because the world's changed since the pandemic. You know, TV, oh. TV don't have the money that they used to have. Advertising revenues are down, blah, blah, blah. They've got to look at all that stuff, innit? And that affects everyone. It affects me, it affects all the other content creators, comedians as well. And, um, what was I saying? So ultimately, bro, like... In terms of money we're talking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So money-wise, Alhamdulillah, I'm not struggling. Yeah, no, I'm not struggling, you're Alhamdulillah. Still doing good. Alhamdulillah. But it's not as much as you... I'm not balling. But I'm, not, not, I'm not buying APs and and Rolexes and, and all these sorts of things. It's not, I'm not there. But, but all I'm going to say is, I know, right, how much, right, I know this though. Go on. I, I'm not going to say how much it is, but I know how much it is, the base, the basic, even the basic, right? Yeah. For someone to be on BBC. I'm not going to say how much it is, right? But what I'll say is. How much do you think it is? 
Oh no, it's over about a thousand and something a day. It depends on the show. Man like Mubeen, a thousand and something a day. Because D147, mm-hmm. he got something like, was it 1500 grand for two, a day or two? He did it like Yeah, day. but how many days do you think we filmed? But, but he said God's con. He only went to But he said God's con was doing 28 in that month. And he said it was like God's con probably, probably made eight grand a day in that. I don't know if you mentioned people's figures in that, but. It's not as much as, it's not, it's not as much as you think. No. Okay, but I, just, I, was, I, was, I was like, oh, like, what the hell? Like, that is life changing. Even in America, like, yeah. You get like. Even at that level, you'll be getting like 40 grand an episode. 40 grand an episode? You've got Americans. That is. But mad. we're not. So it's not anywhere near that. <laughs> yeah. It's not anywhere near that. But a grand is no no really a forty years so I'm not. I don't where, want to be a, but, where, yeah, but where's the grand? Where's forty grand? Isn't it? Yeah, right. It's the difference between. Okay, right, so yeah. Right. So what I'm saying is, Alhamdulillah, Watch Allah's you. blessed me. You're right, doing good. But I'm not. I'm not like giving out AP watches in it. I'm not. Even, <laughs> I'm not even got one for myself. So you know, it's not at that level. But Alhamdulillah, we, Allah continues to bless us, and who knows, one day we might be. Oh, Allah, man. Now, but you're doing well, and obviously I didn't mean to discuss figures or anything, but it's always like. Interesting to to like for no I've read the youngsters that they like to realize that but there is money in TV. Like, there is. They, they can change their life. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. Um, I love it. As in even online, bro. If you're like an influencer who hits the right numbers, who's hit the right zeitgeist, brand deals come, bro. Brand exactly. Yeah. And they pay more than TV. That's where the money is. I got a good deal from um, just before like this book, man. Right. Mm-hmm. My last one. I did a Roach Killer. Is right. Roach Killer mm-hmm. singer. Right. I did mm-hmm. a bang with him and. He, um, that was my final episode for Jim and Donna mm-hmm. and they actually paid me quite well, bro. Like, they, yeah, they, they yeah, sponsored yeah. me. Yeah, brand, brand deals are yeah. different. I was, I was shocked that they sponsored me like that, right? Yeah. And they approached me, and it was mad because obviously my followers know about this. But I was like, whoa, what do like massive influencers get? Like, for example, if you want an advert now, mm-hmm. them deals you get for the advert. Yeah, they're is silly money. Crazy. They're, they're, they're silly money. Yeah. They're silly money. You know what I mean? Well, martial yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, um, so where do you see yourself going now with the 10 o'clock show, for example, right? Mm-hmm. You know, before we say, we well, we haven't got too long, but how did you get approached with the 10 o'clock show? And secondly, where do you see that going and what are your plans now? So the, the, the commission at Channel 4, okay. see my show, the stuff, loved what I do. So she said, we need to work together. So she put me with a production company. Yeah. And we started, we started just fleshing out ideas. We came up with the idea of the 10 o'clock show. The name came a bit later, we came up, the other show was, we came up with the idea. Yeah. And then she was like, yeah, sick, go make three episodes. And then we did it, bro. And how was that feeling? Like, did you do That was a dream. They were like, whoa, whoa, look at my own TV show. That's a dream, bro. Like, we've only made one series. And then, the pan- okay. and then before we could cool. discuss what happens next, the pandemic hit. Now we're in a completely different landscape. She's moved on, my champion. Because that yeah. happens a lot as well. Yeah. You, you, you have a champion, and then they move on. And they go to a different channel, and then someone else replaces them. And they might, oh, they might not love you as much as the last person, innit? So now you got to navigate what they want, and are they into what you're doing? they got their own ideas, they got their own favourites. Do they want to put them in that slot? So you got to worry about all these things, bro. This is what, when I say to you, I don't feel like a made man. I still feel like I'm hustling. I still feel like I haven't made it yet. I'm not guaranteed. Like, I think that keeps you going. Huh? That keeps you going, though. It does keep you going. If you, if you were settled now and you thought you were a made man, I think one, the moment you start feeling like a made man, that yeah, is yeah, what yeah, that's yeah, the end of it. Because then you're going to be like, oh, I don't need to do anything. And when you stop what you've been doing to get to where you are, it's like I, I told you, I remember I told you, I got sucked into like a pyramid scheme, right? I was telling you that yeah, before, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like, I did learn one I'm thing from like, there. This food was. It's fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, yo, um, when you like get to a certain level, like a stage, the guy was like, you went up on your intensity level. He goes, the higher you get up the compensation plan, he goes, you, you got to open it. Like, I know in my head, I'm yeah. like, yo, bro, bro, I, make I know, I don't, I haven't worked as. I'm not working as hard right now as I was at the beginning. Okay, cool. Because I am at a certain level now. Marshall, and I feel it that I'm at a certain level. Back then, I had nothing. No one knew me. No, there's nothing. There's no mukbang invites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whereas now I feel it like I can, I can feel myself like I'm going on tour later this year, alhamdulillah, by tickets. Um, <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm working as hard on this tour as I was previously on other shows, like, you know, four or five years ago. But it's easier for you now. Because not that it's easy, just more complacent, isn't it? So I've got to mm. shake myself out of that. Plus, there's been a pandemic for a year. We've all been sat at home yeah. like this for a year. And so it's now you're going to be like, get off the couch, innit, and go back out there. Self-awareness is key, though. At least you realise Self-awareness is massive, bro. That's, you, you know it. what? It's the most underrated thing to have self-awareness. Because how many people meet, what do you meet, who are fully deluded, and you're like, yeah. 
you want to make you want to try and make it this, i've seen you bro because you're talking about much you want to make it but i've also seen how hard you're working yeah i've seen people talk the same talk but there's no effort, there's no effort yeah. so i'm like no you got to marry the talk with the effort bro whereas with me because i'm not big on this whole i like obviously I do a bit of social media because i need it for my work in it yeah but that's not i'm not a social media mm-hmm. not, not like you guys do any like um yeah so i want to i want to be more like you guys in terms of like putting content out there and and like hus the cream sunk honestly this you're going to love this tea correct dry yeah they have got caramel sauce in it what's going on it oh no that's bland you know what bro got some i'm going to let me put it on record yeah i am going to sue navid central when i get diabetes i'm going to get diabetes next month yeah and i'm going to take this guy for all the 2500 pound that he has i'm going to take it all off him this equipment this mic the tripod everything bro cuz i'm getting diabetes after this <laughs> that's my endorsement of this place no but it's fire it's literally literally fire but um as i want to make sure like we we had a good bunch here somewhere like he, was, he was he was saying that to me i, I said to him i can't let him know because i don't know, know where you're taking me yeah i know lady i know lady pool road cuz i've been here a lot yeah. but obviously there's how many there's like some restaurants yeah. here bro so I this is new this is new bro, this is banging like it's like a French kind of thing, but yeah, like okay. So I said we haven't got long left. Um, how long have we been running for? Then do you know? We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. hear the. Yeah, okay. It was about five minutes ago. Really? Yeah. I think, okay, cool. Okay, so great. Final I've got, message. I've got to go and host a show. Okay, you got to host a show, guys. Um, that's why I was well, trying to wrap it up really quickly. Um, but he, guys, he's really humble. Look at that. He came through for me, guys, and it's massive. You know, guys, TV guys, like literally. I am so excited and humble about this experience right now because I'm sat right next to someone of the role model of mine and bro what advice would you have for anyone that they want to reach their goals or dreams anyone who it is right um what advice would you have for them persevere resilience rejection is horrible is shit bro yeah you've been at the bottom i've had it where you just feel like pure shit yeah bakwas tatti yeah <laughs> but the point is i was saying it earlier i'm not going to repeat myself again it doesn't last whatever heartbreak whether it is you know relationship related work related home life business work uh, whatever yeah it doesn't last pick yourself up and try again as a very this lyric from a song yeah? yeah but pick yourself up and try again because the people who succeed yeah they're not the ones who make it the first time you know the ones that oh, all love go and then just this do it and it works out for them they're the ones who got rejected and was like you know what let me try again let me try again let me try again let me try again and it might be the fourth fifth sixth time that they do it a similar click sometimes longer yeah but ultimately is the people who don't give up or the ones who make it no oh there might be one person that you know who does something first time and they get it right most people myself included and the breathing included you have to stop 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 start try 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 you 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 fall into like a hole metaphorically and you try and climb yourself back out of it and then you keep going and then you get to a position where things do start working out and when do when things start working out they go well very very fast so you got to be prepared for that so yeah don't give up on your dreams keep persevering be resilient and pray pray guys that's Not amazing guys you know literally it's been amazing having you on this is an absolutely massive mukbang slash interview i've loved it bro like literally, i appreciate you coming on so much guys Even though we got all the time, you know, I told me, I told me, bro. Um, I didn't want him to get late, but guys, it's been amazing. And I say, guys, this is a stepping stone for me as well to be here, sat next to Tazilias, guys. This place is banging. And the place is banging, right? Yeah. Um, everything's been delicious, guys. Make sure you like the video, follow Tazilias on Instagram too. Make sure you watch his show. Um, he's got a tour coming up. What's, Five tickets. What's the tour called? Uh, the Vicky Show. The Vi- the Vicky Tour. Vicky Tour, yeah. It's Vicky, isn't it? So well, what what, what city is he going to? Birmingham. London, yep. Manchester, yep. Blackburn, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Bristol, Newcastle, Brighton, Leicester, Ed- Warwick, Coventry, like everywhere, bro. I'm going everywhere. Okay, sick. Every- Leeds, all that. Bradford, everything. Okay, sick. Can we get a little joke before we go? Or if you can't do it, you can't do it. I'm forgetting it's about stand up. So I, they- I can give you a shit one. <laughs> like a dad joke. <laughs> a dad joke. No, go on. <laughs> Why do they call it the Indian variant and not Vindaflu? And not Vindaflu? Like it's going to lose the curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just made the joke to him, you know. What did I? What did I? I'm going to drink my milkshake. What did I call it? What did I call it? The Indian uh, variant, not the Vinda flu. And not Vinda flu. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the joke, bro. <laughs> That's the whole joke. Listen. <laughs> the joke. I've explained to the reason now. 
<laughs> listen, you know what flu is, innit? Yeah. When you get ill, right? <laughs> so I've changed the curry's name, because that Indian curry. Oh! From Vindaloo to Vindaloo. Vind- Vind- flu. <laughs> yes, I get it, I get it. I'm dead, I'm dead. <laughs> There's no tour guys, <laughs> tour cancel guys, get refunds on your tickets. <laughs> you got it. That's how you know. That's why you call a comedian. That was sick. Even the guy in the show is going, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is everyone laughing? <laughs> you sick. If you got the joke, you better fucking come to the tour. If you don't get it, just stay at home. And stay home, and what are they going to scream? Let's finish it with that. Nabeed, Nabeed Central! Comment, share, like, video, comment, and share on it, guys, yeah? You got me with that, though. You got me with that. That was hilarious. That's how you call a natural comedian. That was sick, though. I really appreciate you coming on, guys. Make sure you check out the tour, the Vicky tour. Peace and love! Nabeed Central!